Welcome to the Grand Old Players Theater Company. This is Mark Manhart. And I'm Bonnie Gill. Yeah, we're here today to talk about live theater with older, older adults. Older people, right. And we wanted to talk about this play because it's such a special one that we did that uh, I direct, and it wasn't in it, but the, the fact that I wasn't in it goes back to uh, I tried out for the part of Atticus Finch because I was about 40 years old and I had a uh, family, I had a daughter that was about 10 or something. And uh, I thought I did pretty good even using kind of a uh, southern accent. Well, I didn't get the part, but what happened was the part was filled by a young man. 20. 20. 20 yeah. Who probably didn't have a child of 10, and it just didn't play right. You know, I, I sensed, I'm biased, of course, but I sensed that, uh, that this was a great play about father-daughter relationship. Mm -hmm. To Kill a Mockingbird by... So here we were, 30-some years yeah. later, and you're still thinking of this experience. Yeah, it, to yeah. me, this was a lifetime. Well, I guess so you were 40, so we were here we were 10 years later yeah. starting the theater, and you were thinking Yeah, I'm only experience. about 60 now. So To Kill a Mockingbird, we're all familiar with the Harper, Harper Lee's. The play Lee. was done by a man called Chris Sergel. Yes. And Mark, as director, decided to put um, some music to it, which was really, really good. We've got a lot of comments on how nice that uh, enhanced the mood of the play. Yeah, it was background music. And it was uh, actually a piece. Um, we have a, a local uh, musician, Robert Blazer, who composed and uh, performed this piece, Looks Like Rain. And that's what was playing on the opening scene when we see Scout. And Scout was played by a young lady named Amory, Abby Cameron, who had never been on stage, but was a natural. In the course of our 25 plus years doing theater, um, well, 30 actually, but uh, I only ran across two children that were total naturals. Yeah. And Abby was one of them. And I'm really proud to say that uh, despite she didn't get a lot of encouragement from her father, but he did allow her to do it, yeah. she is still doing theater, uh, theater today, 10 years later. Uh, and studying theater in college. Well, the show opens. It's a show about uh, a lawyer with this young girl and young son in Macon, Alabama. 1935. 1935. Macon, Georgia. Mm -hmm. I think oh. Macon, Georgia. Well, well uh, the opening where we played this background music, uh, Scout is on stage waiting for her father to come down the lane. You know, and there's a stump that she sits on and she's waiting. And I'll tell you, that little kid did so well without a single word that in 30 seconds she had that audience by the neck. They were intensely caught up in her character, which is really difficult to do on stage. And even though uh, the Grand Old Players Company was uh, founded, to work with older adults. This is a perfect example of how we worked with children, too. Uh, uh, if the part called for it, she was 10, and we had another woman in her 20s. Well, actually, no, I think she was just in her teens, maybe 18. Anyway, she did the part of the narrator offstage, yeah. which also was very, very effective. And then Mark asked uh, our good friend Molly Chester, who yeah. was 83, to play the mean old lady of the neighborhood. And she, she had a cane. Well, she didn't really need a cane. She just had to, she knew how to use it, even on another person, you know. She was just terrific. And uh, Abby was so uh, powerful. I just remember things that in the play, only a little girl could do that, you know. Just like sometimes only an older woman can do that. That's right. And there was an older woman in it uh, who played the maid and was Oh, fearful. yes, yes, she yes, yes, to, yes. You had to show her how to be fearful. Yeah. To 
actually... No, 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 no. You're talking about a different part. That was Helen Robinson. That was the wife of the accused. Yeah. And yeah. she, this young lady, we kept wanting her to be uh, have the emotion of being in that courtroom with her husband about to be sentenced for murder. And she just couldn't get it and couldn't get it. And we were in a, an old theater, and one night, um, at this particular time, and one night, the bat flew out of the rafters. And the look on her face was weird. I just <laughs> said, that's what we want. I said, that's Helen Robinson. I said, hold that feeling. And uh, and remember that when you get into this courtroom scene, think of that bat. We have to say. Another thing that brought in yeah. a lot of fear, remember the villain? Oh, yeah. I have to tell you this. Here, we're at the theater seeing my, my own play. And I'm sitting next to a friend of mine who is sitting on the aisle. Well, in the play, I had the villain. Uh, come onto stage from the house instead of from stage right stage, but from the house. So we walk down the aisle and go up on the stage. And he he was to have a big knife in his hand. You know, really. Well, they cut the biggest knife we could. And here comes, uh, what's his name? Bob Ewell. Bob Ewell. That's his he's character. Played by Tim Livers. Tim mm -hmm. Livers. He's a, he's a guitarist. He's walking down the stage. And he walked by us, and I felt my friend kind of go like this. And after the show, he said to me, you know, Mark, when that guy walked down that aisle, I almost jumped up and decked him right there on the spot. And so, I thought, yeah. you get in the theater, that's good. That is good. And you didn't get to ever play Atticus Finch, but you did get to direct. I did get to direct it, yeah, which was such a great thing for me. And uh, there were uh, things in the play. To me, the play was kind of uh, a lesson in the law. Mm -hmm. You know, what is the law? And how do we respect a judge? And, and that's then, another whole discussion for yeah. another time. But, but now, also, it was a it's a great play for father daughter relationship, which is power between the father and the daughter of any family. So, so thanks for joining us. I'm yeah. Bonnie Gill, Mark Manhart, and we'll see you next time to discuss Agatha Christie's Mousetrap. The Mousetrap. It's a monstrous masterpiece.